When I was washing my girlfriend's panties, I noticed a hole in them, a hole burned by a cigarette butt. But I quit smoking over a year ago. There was a small hole on the lace edge of the panties, hardly noticeable if you didn't look closely. With my five years of smoking experience, I could tell at a glance that this yellowish burn mark was definitely made by a cigarette butt. My heart skipped a beat. I quit smoking a long time ago. And my girlfriend doesn't smoke either. Can someone explain this to me? I stood in the bathroom, holding the panties, and couldn't help but let my imagination run wild. The more I thought about it, the worse it seemed. The more I thought about it, the more convinced I was that I was being cheated on. Just then, my girlfriend sent me a WeChat message. Honey, I have to work overtime again tonight. You should go to bed first. Isabel's job was something I arranged through connections. She worked as a H or assistant at a private company, a position chosen for its ease. But recently, she's been working overtime frequently, coming home close to 10 every night. I didn't think much of it at first, assuming she was genuinely busy. But now, something's off, definitely off. Suppressing my anger, I replied to her, What time do you get off work? I'll come pick you up. Oh, no need. Honey, you know how busy we are at the end of the year. I have no idea when I'll finish here. I immediately changed clothes and drove straight to Isabel's company. The lights in her office were on, and I could hear faint voices from inside when I stood at the door. Could they really be working overtime? I didn't rush in. Instead, I took out my phone and called Isabel. I don't feel comfortable with you going home alone. I'll wait downstairs at your office. Didn't I tell you it wasn't necessary? No worries. Baby, I'm already downstairs at your office. Isabel's voice on the other end clearly changed. With a hint of panic. What? You actually came? Why did you come? Why did I come? Of course. To see what you're up to. I didn't say much more. After hanging up, I hid in the stairwell. Within a few minutes, Isabel came out, followed by a man in a business suit. The two of them hugged as soon as they reached the elevator. They kissed each other goodbye reluctantly. While kissing, the man's hands roamed all over Isabel's body. Suspecting is one thing, but seeing it with my own eyes is another. My rage clouded my judgment, and blood rushed to my head. I wanted to storm out and strangle these two. Then I heard the man laugh. Your boyfriend really cares about you. How? Huh? Don't mention him. He's like a leech. So annoying. Isabel's words felt like a bucket of cold water over my head, temporarily keeping me from rushing out. The man continued with his filthy talk. Why don't you let him wait downstairs while we continue? What are you thinking? He could come up at any time. Last time he called you, we tried it once, didn't we? What are you afraid of? Oh, you're so bad. I hate you. Damn. So I was already part of their play. The urge to kill them both grew stronger. Just then, the man's face came into view. It was him. Isabel had previously posted photos of company outings on her social media, so I have an impression. This man is the company's deputy general manager, named Victor. He looks quite decent, but knowing that a female subordinate has a boyfriend and still doing such shameless things makes him a total scumbag. Moreover, from the way he talked, it was clear he enjoyed the thrill of fooling me, treating me like an idiot. Suddenly, I didn't want to confront them face to face anymore. If I break the news, at most we would have a fight. Then I would break up with Isabel. That would be too easy on them. Before Isabel entered the elevator, I secretly took a photo of them holding hands. I took the stairs down. And Isabel was already waiting by the car. I pretended to know nothing. I thought you would take longer. So I went to the first floor to use the restroom. Maybe because I ruined her fun. Isabel rolled her eyes slightly and complained. It ended early. Hurry up and open the door. I'm freezing. On the way home, she pretended to be very tired and closed her eyes to rest. Perfect. I didn't want to talk to her much either, fearing that if I started, I wouldn't be able to resist questioning why she treated me this way. That night, while she was asleep, I secretly checked her phone. The more I looked, the angrier I got. Isabel had been hooking up with Victor for months. She joined this company in June and started getting close to Victor in August. Recently, 
they finally crossed the last line, using overtime as an excuse to have an affair openly in the office. While these two were fooling around, I was at home cooking and doing laundry for Isabel, worrying about her being too tired at work, fearing for her safety on her way back, and dreaming about our future together. She described me to Victor on WeChat like this. I'm pretty, so shouldn't he comply with me? He's easy to manipulate, never suspects me, and is willing to spend money on me. Whether we get married or not is uncertain. And my parents always want me to find someone richer. She also said, what's so good about your old hag at home? She's old and boring. Why don't you divorce her? If you get a divorce, I'll break up with him. I can't believe these words came from the person lying next to me, but the thousands of chat messages, each one felt like a whip striking me. Isabel was right. Before today, I never doubted her, never questioned her schedule, never checked her phone, so she felt safe not deleting the chat history. I looked at the person sleeping next to me and suddenly felt she was so dirty, dirty enough to make me sick. The next morning, Isabel's phone rang while she was putting on makeup. She naturally answered, seriously saying, Hello, Manager Chen. What's the matter? Yes, yes, okay. I'll try to arrive early today to go over things with you. I asked her, Is there something at work? Yes, the boss is urging me to go quickly. There's no way. It's the end of the year. Lots of things to do. I'll probably have to work overtime today. I looked at her brightly painted lips and tight-fitting skirt, and pretended to be concerned. Why don't I find someone to get you another job? I can't bear to see you so tired. No. Isabel shouted. Then she realized her reaction was too intense and smiled awkwardly. I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm still young. It's normal to work hard. Besides, you already used your connections to get me this job. I should consider that too. Right? When she was leaving, she wanted to kiss me. Just thinking about how she used that same mouth to passionately kiss the jerk last night made my stomach churn. So I quickly pretended to look for something to avoid her. Isabel and Victor had it all planned out. When she called him while I was around, she called him Manager Chen. When I wasn't around, she called him Darling, Daby, Husband, and even Daddy on WeChat. You can imagine how depraved they were in private. Victor deliberately chose to call at this time in the morning. Maybe flirting and acting shamelessly in front of me really thrilled them. Damn it. Since they love to play so much, I'll play along to the end. I looked into Victor's background. It turns out this guy not only has a wife but also two kids. His wife quit her job after having the children to focus on taking care of the family. His parents are retired university teachers and live in the same community to help with the kids. I spent some money hiring someone to follow him for a while and discover another secret about Victor. This bastard is still entangled with his merry ex-girlfriend. Every time they meet, they go straight to a hotel. Wow. Just wow. He's keeping the home fires burning while flying flags of infidelity outside. Two outsiders. Victor might seem like a successful man with a perfect family and career. But in reality, he's just a flashy fraud. Full of shit. The more dirt I have on Victor, the better it is for me. I collected all sorts of evidence and even managed to find the contact details of his family, his ex-girlfriend, and her husband. In the era of big data, no one has any privacy. One day, Isabel lied to me again, saying she had to work overtime. I coldly reply, Okay, don't forget to eat. I'll be worried if you get too hungry. And Mamham, you too. Hubby, eat well. That evening, I parked outside her company and used a new phone number I had prepared to send a message to Victor's wife. Does your husband often say he has to work overtime? You better pay attention and don't be foolish. Some people enjoy going back to old flames a bit too much. She called me almost immediately. I hung up. She had to resort to texting. Who are you? What do you mean? He is a long-term ex-girlfriend, right? I left it at that, no matter how much she asked. I didn't reply. For a woman who puts all her energy into her family, just a little bit of doubt about her husband is enough. I waited patiently in my car. And sure enough, soon enough, Victor came downstairs. He looked tense, running towards the parking lot 
while frantically explaining something on the phone. I laughed, seeing that bastard scrambling away was truly hilarious. Isabel followed with a constipated look on her face. As soon as I saw her coming out, I hit the gas and left. Victor's wife might be a housewife, but she's no pushover. Her parents run a business locally, and she has two older brothers. She was spoiled growing up and is known to have a fiery temper. Victor was already entangled with his ex-girlfriend, and with my tip-off, if his wife started digging, it wouldn't end well for him. So, he kept a low profile for a while. Not only did he start coming home on time, every day, but he also stopped flirting with Isabel on WeChat in the middle of the night. This infuriated Isabel, like all mistresses aiming for the top spot. Isabel looked down on the legitimate wife. She messaged Victor on WeChat. What's so great about being controlled by that tigress? She's old and fierce. Am I not better than her? Ha. Huh. How naive. Married men like Victor, especially those who are content with their lives, want a stable family with a wife and kids while also having fun on the side. Home is home, and play is play they keep them very separate. But despite saying this, I needed to help her a bit to keep the game going. To provoke Isabel, I started treating her very differently all over this period. When we fought, I stopped giving in and often made her so angry that her face turned red. Jorge, you're yelling at me. How dare you yell at me? Yelling is the least I should do. I should be slapping you instead. Was all the kindness you showed me before fake. Men are truly scum. Once they get what they want, they stop cherishing it. I don't cherish you. Think about whether you deserve to be cherished before you insult me. I let her throw her tantrums. Not even bothering to comfort her. I shrug. Think whatever you want. This provoked Isabel even more. And she began to send Victor frantic messages while I was asleep. She even threatened him saying if he dared to ignore her again, she would confront his wife directly. This scared Victor. Moreover, Victor, being tightly controlled by his wife, was also feeling stifled. So, they came up with a plan, a business trip. As soon as Isabel walked in, she headed straight for the bedroom to pack her clothes, unable to hide her excitement. Honey, our company has arranged a last-minute HR training. I have to go on a business trip tomorrow. Oh. For how many days? Just two days. I pretended to ask her. Davey, did you forget that tomorrow is Saturday? We promised to have dinner with your parents. Isabel was busy picking out clothes and didn't even look up. One meal can be rescheduled anytime. But this training opportunity won't come again. I sneered. Finally getting the chance I needed. She and that scoundrel had gone to great lengths to meet secretly. The scoundrel, afraid his wife might call the office actually arranged a real business trip for himself, but he would leave on Friday and be back on Saturday. As for Isabel, she lied to me about a business trip, planning to spend the entire weekend with the scoundrel in a hotel. I found the hotel reservation information in her text messages. Since Victor was under his wife's close surveillance, Isabel had to handle the hotel booking herself. She had even bought a set of super sexy lingerie, sneaking it into her suitcase. She never even wore that lingerie for me. The next day, Isabel didn't let me take her to the train station, and I didn't insist. She said she would miss me, but her heart had already run away. Eager to meet her lover, after she left, I didn't sit idle. I bought a few gifts and headed to Isabel's parents' house. Their home was less than two hours' drive from the city. Her parents didn't have steady jobs. And there was a younger brother who did nothing but play video games all day. Uncle, auntie, Isabel doesn't know I'm here today. Actually, I'm planning to propose to her. Her mom and dad exchanged a glance, smiling but not too warmly. Jorge, you've been dating Isabel for over a year. It's time to talk about marriage. But getting married is no small matter. I quickly said, I know. Getting married requires both families to sit down and discuss everything. Don't worry. Isabel is a good girl, and my family will show enough sincerity to marry her. Her dad's eyes lingered on the gifts I brought. As parents, we don't ask for much. Just hope our daughter can find an understanding family who values and treats her well. That's all nice to say. But what does understanding and valuing mean? It's about how much dowry the groom's family can give. 
Isabel's parents had asked her many times how much dairy my family could provide. I had already done my research. In their area, a typical dairy ranged from 66,000 to 88,000. Not excessive, but if that were the case, her parents wouldn't be beating around the bush with me. I smiled. Uncle, you're right. Rest assured, my family's dowry will be more generous than others, ensuring Isabel won't lose face. Her dad cleared his throat at my vague response. Her mom got the hint. Jorge, my daughter has a bachelor's degree and is beautiful. You probably don't know this, but even though I say Isabel has a boyfriend, matchmakers are lining up to propose for her. Last month, our neighbor's daughter got married with far fewer conditions than Isabel. Yet the groom's family gave a dowry of 200,000. I calmly said, Auntie, my family will give a dowry of 500,000. How? How much? 500,000. 500,000. Her mom was so shocked she almost jumped up. Her dad, who was drinking water, choked and coughed repeatedly. Jorge, are you serious? Your parents agree to this too. I suppressed the mockery in my eyes. Yes. I discussed it with my parents, and they agree. I showed the old couple the fake chat records I had created. Her mom instantly beamed with Joe. Look at me. Jorge has been here for so long, and I forgot to make him some tea. I stopped her. Auntie, I'm not done yet. The house I'm living in right now was bought for me by my parents with full payment. I will add Isabel's name to the deed. If Isabel marries me, I want to give her a sense of security. Upon hearing this, they were so happy they didn't know what to say. What are you standing there for? Go wash some fruit for Jorge. I heard the sound of video games coming from the bedroom. I knew it was Isabel's good-for-nothing brother. Carlos. Uncle. Auntie. I think it's not good for Carlos to stay home all the time. Her dad shook his head. This rascal. We found him several jobs. But he didn't like any of them. The easy ones pay too little. And the well-paid ones he finds tiring. He stays home every day. Driving us crazy. A friend of mine has a company and needs a driver to pick up and drop off clients. The pay is nearly 10000 a month. Should I ask for Carlos? It's an easy job. Good pay. And flexible hours. What do you think? Her parents were so excited they wouldn't let go of my hand. Really? Jorge. If you can do this, you'll solve a big problem for our family. Her mom raised her voice by eight octaves. I've always told her dad that Jorge is the right one. We can trust Isabel with him. He's a reliable and good boy. Ha. Huh. You weren't saying that when you called Isabel to come back for a blind date. No matter. Life is a play. And it's all about acting. Then, Isabel's parents insisted I stay for dinner. But I politely declined. My schedule was very tight today and I had important things to do. I arrived at the hotel Isabel had booked at 10 o'clock that night. The person I had arranged was already waiting at the hotel early in the morning. After Isabel checked in that afternoon, he sent me the room number. I then sent this room number to another person. Bro, this is all I can do for you. Half an hour later, a man with glasses and a burly man entered the hotel. I hid by the stairwell and watched. The man with glasses pretended to be a hotel staff delivering something and knocked on the door of room 8402. When the door opened, the burly man kicked it in. Isabel's terrified screams echoed immediately. It wasn't too late. So many people were still awake and came out to see the commotion. I mingled with the crowd, secretly recording. Victor and Isabel. Disheveled and panicked. The burly man. Already towering. Easily overpowered Victor. The man with glasses suddenly produced a baseball bat. You scumbag. Dare to cheat on me. I'm going to beat you to death. The baseball bat hit Victor's stomach hard. And the burly man kicked him in the groin. Victor screamed and fell. Clutching his crotch. Ouch. That sounded painful. Sweet satisfaction. Just watching it. The spectators outside were eager to see the drama. And no one dared to intervene. Plus. In this kind of situation, most people would assume it was a cheating scenario and be eager to watch the show. Victor was beaten, nose bleeding profusely, while Isabel cowered in a corner, desperately trying to wrap herself in a towel. She watched Victor being beaten to the ground, curling up like a shrimp, and threatened in a trembling voice, Who are you? If you keep hitting, 
I'll call the police. The man with glasses laughed. Call the police then. I'll just say this guy hired a prostitute at the hotel. When Isabel heard herself being called a prostitute, she was so angry her eyes turned red. Screw you. You're the prostitute. Your whole family is prostitutes. What else could you be? This man has a wife fan kids. Are you his wife? Are you? If you are, then call the police. The man with glasses had Isabel speechless. Victor. Lying on the ground. Panicked at the mention of calling the police and hurriedly intervened. No. Don't call the police. The onlookers were getting more excited. Murmuring though in unison. Too scared to call the police so he really is cheating. Isabel was both embarrassed and furious. But with no clothes on. She could only huddle in the corner. Desperately pulling the bedsheets and blankets over herself. The man with glasses wasn't just anyone. He was the husband of Victor's ex-girlfriend. A man sharing the same fate as me. Yesterday. I sent him photos of Victor and his ex-girlfriend at the hotel. Then I told him that if he wanted to vent his anger. I could help. As long as he didn't go too far. Victor wouldn't dare call the police. Thus. We have the scene before us. Victor definitely didn't want this to blow up. Or his lie about the business trip would be exposed. Along with his affairs with two women. It would ruin him and bring chaos to his family. The man with glasses, having had enough, grabbed Victor's chin and made him promise never to contact his ex-girlfriend again before letting him go. Seeing Victor kneeling and begging for mercy was immensely satisfying. On Sunday morning, Isabel returned home with her suitcase, looking exhausted. A conspicuous red mark on her neck stood out. Davey, you're back so soon? Why didn't you tell me? I could have picked you up. I pretended to know nothing. Isabel lied without missing a beat. The training ended in one day. And I missed you so much. So I rushed back. TSK TSK TSK. A liar's mouth is full of deceit. I suspiciously looked at her neck. What happened here? An allergic reaction. I went for a massage session with colleagues. And it turned out like this. I'm really annoyed. I wouldn't have gone if I knew. Massage. She really came up with that. I had noticed last night that Victor had left a hickey on Isabel's neck. I was curious about how Isabel would lie about it when she came back. I didn't expect her to cover it up with a massage session. Isabel chatted with me for a bit and then excused herself to take a shower. Taking her phone and hiding in the bathroom. She was actually checking on her lover's injuries. I held back and didn't expose her lie. Their carefully planned secret meeting had gone awry. Victor was scared after the beating and had retreated into his shell. He didn't dare say a word to Isabel at the office. Afraid someone might notice, he still didn't know who had exposed his affair with his ex-girlfriend. Victor even convinced Isabel to delete their chat history. But luckily, I had already backed it up. Isabel was displeased again by Victor's withdrawal. No mistress would be satisfied when the man she thought she had successfully captured returned to his family. While chatting with Isabel, I deliberately brought up Victor and his wife. Davey, I think I saw your deputy general manager on the street today. Hugging his wife. Being so gentle and considerate. He's such a good husband. I kept praising Victor's wife. Saying how beautiful and classy she was. And how Victor was so attentive to her a perfect husband. Isabel's lips twitched with anger. But she couldn't show any signs of it in front of me. She kept pestering Victor on WeChat. How long do you want me to wait? I don't want to sneak around anymore. A few days after the dramatic confrontation, Isabel's company's annual party was approaching. The party was set at a five-star hotel, and she had a solo singing performance. I volunteered to help her with the background video for her performance. The day before the party, I called Isabel's parents, uncle, auntie. I plan to propose to Isabel tomorrow. Can you come man witness it? Of course. No problem. I want to surprise her. So please don't let it slip. Ha ha. We definitely won't. By the way. Jorge. About Carlos' job. I was so busy I forgot to tell you. My friend said he agreed because of my request. After all. Carlos is my future brother-in-law. Just like my own brother. Oh. Jorge. You're the best. We need to take Carlos to thank you properly someday. Isabel's parents thanked me profusely. And I said. We're all family. It's the least I can do. Throughout the conversation, I emphasized one point, 
Isabella and I are getting married, so helping Carlos is only natural. In other words, if Isabella and I don't get married, her brother has nothing to do with me. Isabel's parents were so overjoyed that they couldn't wait for us to get married. I even heard that her parents had started looking for houses with her brother. Go ahead. Be happy. The more Joe now, the greater the disappointment when the truth comes out. All of this is caused by your precious daughter. The next day, Isabel woke up early to spend two hours on her makeup and hair, then set off in her expensive dress. I didn't need to ask to know what she was thinking. At the company's annual party, the senior executives would bring their spouses. And Isabel was determined to compete with Victor's wife. I dropped Isabel off at the hotel and then snuck in myself. The hotel lobby was big enough. I hid in the most remote corner, pretending to be on the phone. The staff assumed I was part of the company and didn't ask me anything. When the party officially started, the boss and vice presidents took turns giving speeches. When it was Victor's turn, I sent a text to his wife. Manager Chen is such an excellent man and deserves a better woman. If the love is gone, it's gone. Do you think a forced relationship will be sweet? When he held me and said you are a surish and boring old woman, I really felt sorry for you. Today, I have a performance. Watch carefully and see if you are more suited to be with him or if I am. Victor's wife was happily holding her phone, recording the event. But as soon as she received my message, her face fell. Sorry but I wasn't making things up. Those were Victor's exact words to Isabel on WeChat. And, indeed, that's exactly how Isabel feels right now. After Victor got off the stage, he seemed to notice his wife's mood was off. He asked a few questions, but she kept a cold face and said nothing, staring intently at every young woman who went up to perform. Just then, my phone rang. It was Isabel's parents. Yes, uncle, you can come straight in. I'm right at the entrance of the lobby. Along with Isabel's parents was Carlos. Carlos, knowing I had found him a cushy, high-paying job, greeted me with an unusually bright smile, calling me brother-in-law repeatedly something he had never done before. This kid never really respected me. Otherwise, he would have come out to greet me the last time I visited their house. I gave him a fake smile. Isabel's performance is about to start. After it's over. I'll go on stage and propose. Her company's staff will cooperate. Finally, it was time for Isabel's performance. When she took the stage, the lights instantly became romantic and gentle, complimenting her delicate makeup and the off-shoulder dress that showed off her collar bones. She looked dreamy and elegant. There was a collective gasp of amazement, followed by cheers and continuous applause. Isabel looked at Victor, sitting at the front table, with eyes full of provocation as if to say, see, I'm young and beautiful, can that old woman next to you compare? I crossed my arms, my excitement barely contained, the moment had finally arrived, the big screen started playing the video, after a brief introduction, the beautiful accompaniment began, Isabel picked up the microphone and slowly started singing, soon getting immersed in her performance, but she didn't notice the faces in the audience changing drastically, yes, I had swapped the MV. I kept the music but replaced the visuals with the video of her and Victor in the hotel room. The video showed a man wearing only boxes being beaten, unable to stand, and a disheveled woman screaming in panic. This first-hand scene of catching adulterers, displayed on the hotel's lead screen, was incredibly shocking. Isabel's parents stood next to me, dumbfounded. Carlos was the first to speak. Mom, isn't that my sister? She actually went to a hotel with another man. Don't talk nonsense. His mom quickly interrupted, nervously looking at me. Jorge, that person can't be Isabel. I know my own daughter. I wouldn't mistake her. It's definitely not her. Carlos, stubborn as always, continued. How can it not be? His father's stern look cut him off. I pretended to be in a state of shock and disbelief, of course. I was acting. Jorge, her father said with a trembling voice, there must be some misunderstanding here. As for Victor, he was still sitting there, mouth half open, eyes wide as he stared at the screen, almost falling out of his chair. Isabel, seeing Victor's reaction from the stage, probably thought he was mesmerized by her. Her expression grew even more smug, 
The boss and all the senior executives in the front row looked as if they had swallowed a fly. Some people in the back row let out lewd jeers. Isabel, singing, noticed something was wrong. The audience wasn't looking at her but at something behind her. She slowly turned around. At that moment, the camera zoomed in on her disheveled appearance. Isabel froze on the spot. The microphone slipping from her hand and hitting the floor with a sharp nose. I said with a pained expression, Uncle, can you still say that's not Isabel? Her parents were speechless, wishing they could disappear into the ground. Everyone's eyes were now on Isabel and Victor. And, of course, Victor's wife, Victor, like a dog begging for mercy, was almost kneeling in front of his wife. Honey, it's not what it looks like. Let me explain. His wife was still relatively calm, her tone not yet showing much anger. This is what you promised me, that you would never stray. The what woman wouldn't be angry seeing a video of her husband cheating in a hotel. This was just the calm before the storm. Honey, let's go home first, and I'll explain everything. One ex-girlfriend wasn't enough. Now you've hooked up with this company's slut. No wonder you keep saying you have to work overtime. Honey, I really haven't wronged you. Victor's attitude of denying everything even at the last moment finally enraged his wife. She slammed the table and pointed at Victor. Damn you, try lying to me again. I'll deal with that slut first, then I'll deal with you. Finally, the wife's fury was unleashed. Just what I wanted. If it weren't for Isabel's parents standing next to me, I would have cheered. Victor's wife, being closest to the stage, quickly rushed up. Isabel. Terrified, Dr. Weba was grabbed by her hair. What wife wouldn't want to kill the mistress when she sees one? Especially since, in Victor's wife's eyes, this video might have been orchestrated by Isabel herself, deliberately shown during the performance to provoke her. She punched Isabel's face. Yes, punched. Most women slap when they fight. But this woman was fierce. Her punch is swift and powerful. I suspected she had boxing training. Ditch. Do you feel proud being a mistress? Seducing men while singing. Thinking I wouldn't notice. Dare to seduce my husband. I'll kill you. Believe it or not. Isabel screamed in pain. Trying to shield herself with her arms. But she was helpless. People rushed to the stage to intervene. Others shouted. Some recorded. And many just watched. Creating chaos. It took a lot of effort to separate the two women. And Isabel was already beaten to a pulp. No matter how embarrassing it was, her mother had to go over to protect her daughter. Perhaps because she was beaten so badly and was both ashamed and angry. Isabel completely lost her mind. Her eyes red as she hysterically shouted at the legitimate wife. Fine. Let's clear things up today. He doesn't love you anymore. Got it? He doesn't love you. You two will divorce sooner or later. You think you're something just because you gave him to kids. What do you have? Victor said you're just a slap. Isabel was sent sprawling to the ground. Everyone was stunned. Victor had slapped Isabel hard. He pointed at Isabel and cursed. It. You filthy whore. You've been harassing me since you started working here and tricked me into going to the hotel. I'm telling you. My wife is the love of my life. Who do you think you are to compare with her? Victor's eyes were full of venom. As if he wanted to kill. I warn you, if you continue to destroy my family, I would rather lose my job than let you or your family live in peace. Isabel was dumbfounded. She looked at her lover in disbelief, her mouth opening and closing several times, but unable to utter a word. Just before going on stage, they were still exchanging flirtatious glances. But Isabel never expected that when confronted with his wife, she was nothing in Victor's eyes. Victor's final words were a blatant threat. Victor turned to beg his wife, Honey, can we go home now? I beg you, please. After setting up this whole scene, could I let him go? After watching the drama for so long, it was finally my turn. I composed myself, then ran to the stage holding the bouquet I had prepared. Fuck you. I punched Victor with all my might. I had been holding back this punch for a long time. He was completely unprepared staggering and then falling to the ground. He spat out a mouthful of blood, along with a tooth. I had picked Isabel up from her company many times, so many people there knew me. 
My punch seemed justified. I looked at Isabel with heartbreak. I was planning to propose to you today. But I didn't expect that you had been deceiving me for so long. What do you see in this married man? Tell me. Tell me. I yelled in a mix of genuine anger and pretense. Isabel, feeling guilty and scared, started crying. Her hair was messy. Her makeup was smudged. And her face was swollen. She looked truly hideous. I threw the bouquet at her. Saying, Isabel, we're breaking up. And walked away. After walking out, I finally let out a long breath. All the patience I had exercised over these days had finally paid off. And I felt a sense of relief and satisfaction. Whatever Victor and Isabel had to face next, it was their own fault. Oh. There was one last thing I needed to do. I compiled all the evidence I had collected. Proof of Victor's hotel stays with his ex-girlfriend. Proof of his hotel stays with Isabel. Thousands of flirtatious WeChat messages between them over the past few months. And even the full video of catching them in the act. One copy for Victor's wife. One for his parents. And one for everyone in the company emails copied from Isabel's tablet. A mix of family victim support and juicy gossip for everyone. Whether Victor's wife would divorce him or not was none of my business. But I wanted that scumbag to be utterly ruined. I never thought that after years of watching gossip online, I would one day be making a PowerPoint because I got cheated on. After finishing all this, I had a great night's sleep. Early the next morning, Isabel was forcibly brought to my place by her parents, but I didn't let them in. Her parents even tried to plead on her behalf. Jorge, you and Isabel have been together for so long. You two have feelings for each other. Don't act impulsively. I maintained a cold expression throughout. Auntie, since you're here, let's clear things up. I thought we could become a family, support each other, and I would gain another pair of parents and a brother. But now, anyway, it's impossible between Isabel and me. Jorge, calm down and think it over. Okay. Isabel has learned her lesson. If you still feel angry, you can vent it on her. She will take any punishment, as long as you can let it go. Isabel shouted indignantly. Dad. I looked at Isabel's face, even more swollen than yesterday. Her eyes red and puffy from crying, without a trace of sympathy. Uncle. You don't need to waste your efforts. You are a man too. If you were in my place, could you endure this? I've already packed Isabel's things. You can take them all back. This place is not a garbage dump. I don't accept any trash. My words were harsh. Isabel's body trembled. And she glared at me in anger. I didn't even bother to give her a look. What? Did I say anything wrong? I threw the pack suitcase out the door. Then closed the door without another word. Seeing that the situation was beyond repair. Isabel's dad started cursing her right outside my door. Useless thing. Look at the mess you've made. Your mother and I worried ourselves sick over your marriage. And what did you do? You lost your job and made us lose face along with you. And your brother's job and house. All ruined by you. You shameless thing. 50,000 as a bride price. Jorge was even willing to put your name on the house deed. Where are you going to find someone like that again? Tell me. What are we going to do now? How? Isabel screamed. What does buying a house for your son have to do with me? You kept pushing me to find a rich man just to drain me and support him. Now you're pretending to be loving parents. You dare talk to your father like that. The sound of hitting, crying, and shouting didn't stop. Husband. Stop it. Stop it. What if someone sees us? Let's discuss this at home. Get lost. I don't have a daughter like you. I watched the scene unfold on the surveillance camera outside and couldn't help but laugh when I had initially painted a rosy picture for Isabel's parents. This was exactly what I wanted to happen. The bigger the promises, the more they would resent their daughter. Victor's situation wasn't any better. He had to deal with his wife while trying to shamelessly stay in the company. But he couldn't bear the constant gossip and judgment from his colleagues. So he packed up and left on his own. His wife immediately filed for divorce, demanding he leave with nothing but the clothes on his back. The two kids would stay with her. And Victor had to pay a hefty amount in child support every month. After failing to persuade her otherwise, Victor initially refused to leave with nothing. 
preferring to fight in court for the assets. But his parents beat him half to death for his stubbornness. Victor's parents, who were university professors before retiring, were upright people. They didn't defend their son after he did such a despicable thing. They readily agreed to their daughter-in-law's demands, only hoping to see their grandchildren often in the future. At this point, Isabel's ridiculous actions began. Isabel's parents originally thought they could use the 50000 bride price from my family, along with their savings, to make a down payment on a house for their son. Carlos would handle the mortgage payments with his salary. So, they hurriedly went to look at houses and even paid a deposit. Who would have thought that after I broke up with Isabel, all their plans fell apart? But if they didn't buy the house, the 100000 deposit would be lost. They had to borrow money everywhere to scrape together the down payment. In their family, Isabel was determined to climb up the social ladder, and her parents were set on getting a house for their son. They lost all shame and came up with the terrible idea of having Isabel fake a pregnancy. Victor was avoiding Isabel, so she went to his parents' house with a fake pregnancy test report. Victor's mother fainted from anger, and his father called an ambulance and then reported it to the police. In front of the police, Isabel didn't dare to lie and honestly admitted that she wasn't pregnant. Victor was already furious about having to leave the house for his wife. When he found out about this, he immediately took some people to Isabel's house and smashed it to pieces. Isabel's parents were also furious and called the police again. Both sides biting at each other was such an entertaining drama that it made me laugh for a long time. One night, out of nowhere, Isabel called to curse me. Jorge. What are you so proud of? How dare you talk to me like that? Yes, I cheated on you. And Victor and I didn't just hook up at the hotel that one time. You simp didn't even know. I calmly reply, isn't it just over time? I help you and manager Chen share your overtime records with everyone in the work email group so all your colleagues can see how dedicated you both are. Isabel was stunned into silence. After a long pause, she gritted her teeth and said, Jorge, it was you. Before she could finish, I hung up and blocked her. Isabel, who had always been arrogant and thought she had me, the simp, wrapped around her finger, would probably cough up blood when she found out the truth. When someone is despicable, justice will catch up with them eventually. If the heavens don't deliver it, I will. 